What is going on everybody? This is Tim Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. This is going to be a multi-part video series. It's going to basically be a front yard remodel. We're going to be taking out this front driveway, putting in a diamond grid driveway with a paver borders. We're going to be taking this little drain out that's oddly put in the front, moving it over to the planter bed so that it's not like a little trip hazard. This whole concrete walkway is coming out. It's going to be a paver walkway. And then that planter bed next to the house is also going to be coming out. And we're just going to be extending the pavers over to the house. Since it's never really that great to have a planter bed next to your home. Also right over here we're taking out this old brick fencing. That was pretty much just uh, the divider between the two properties. What we're going to be putting in instead is some uh, vinyl. Just how their gate is. We're going to continue down off that post. And then just all the way to the front. Also, I hope you guys did enjoy the last uh, little backyard remodel series I uploaded. If you haven't seen it, um, I'd highly recommend going back and checking that out. But other than that, we're going to get right into this build series and start off with the demo. So as you can see, we've been doing a lot of demolition in this front yard. We've pretty much ripped out the entire front yard because like I said in the beginning, we're gonna be doing a new concrete driveway, pavers, planter beds in the front yard. And with pavers, you gotta dig down pretty deep and then bring in road base and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, why not just dig down the driveway a little bit deeper so we can bring in some road base for the driveway as well. While we were digging down pretty deep, I actually did run into a, this funky old cast iron pipe in the ground. Alright, so we're just kind of getting this grade set for the pavers, and look at this old ancient thing we ran into. Like with some electrical lines running through it. This must be ancient. It just snapped right off, right at the, the coupling. Oh, I wonder how far it goes. Try to pull it out. Oh, here we go. I think I got it almost. <laughs> what is this? What the heck? Here, grass. here, grab that saws on. Let's just let's just cut it off. Let's just move some of this. It's dead though, right? Oh yeah, this thing's this thing's ancient, bro. Yeah. So much dirt in there. Maybe try uh, scooping it with your skitster and then you can now up from this yeah. part right here. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah. It's just the thing is, you got your irrigation right there. It could, it could break. So. I know. Get it. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> no! Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh, but dang it, Timmy. <laughs> Man, it wasn't me today, guys. It wasn't me. <laughs> Well, it's a good uh, <laughs> planter shovel now for gardening. Okay. Let's see that. Let's see. A broken yeah, shovel on a broken bro. blade. Right you were pipe. Oh my god. What it's a just hassle. A pipe, but a... What a hassle, huh? Yeah. And these yeah. things are heavy. <clears throat> Dang. What a wire. Whew. Careful. Oh man. That's some ancient stuff. 
Yeah, so taking this old cast iron pipe out and ended up breaking one of my trenching shovels. That was a little sad moment right there. I wanted to lift it with the skidster, but I had irrigation pipe right above it. And I really didn't want to break the irrigation pipe and then end up having to fix all that. We ended up getting it out though without breaking any of the irrigation. And then went right back to uh, basically just getting all this dirt out. I think it's always best to, if you don't have a skidster and you rent like me, you want to make sure you take out enough dirt rather than not enough because you can always bring in recycled road base to fill in the low spots. It also just makes it stronger anyways for whatever you're going to be putting in there, whatever type of hardscape, uh, whether it be concrete, pavers, pavers in our case. So we got to go down pretty deep either way because I really would not want to be doing some extra hand digging the next day or just having to re-rent a skister and spend more money. Normally I do like to rent bins rather than putting all the dirt in my trailer as well. I just think it's a lot of wear and tear for my truck and trailer. The axles of the trailer, training of the truck, uh, fighting those uphill battles, going to the dump. I'd rather just throw it all into one big dumpster uh, multiple times but unfortunately all of my dumpster bin guys were busy the two days I needed them so if you're a dumpster guy in orange uh, in Orange County you got low boys uh, leave a comment I'd be interested in uh, having more guys available and then here is the next day after we do have all of our dirt out we're just getting our elevations established and I'm just gonna go into uh, a little bit more, more detail in person on how we did that okay so you can see we got a lot of the front yard already demoed now the next step we're going to be doing is getting the grade set for our pavers and concrete how we're going to do that is of course we're going to be using a laser level and the way we're going to be establishing all this is really just uh off the the house itself let me show you some close ups so right here so right here at the corner of the house I gotta match to the garage height, right? So I'm basically gonna laser that garage in as my starter point. And then, let's just do that real quick. But after I do laser that in, I'm gonna transfer that benchmark over to this stake right here. And then I'm gonna measure the distance from here to the door, figure out how many feet I have. And like I always say, every eight feet, you wanna go down one inch. So from this point, I'm actually going to go up one inch because I need to fall this way away from the house towards the garage. So we'll see what we got and what, what we can work with. I'm also going to slope the paper slightly this way when we get down to this point towards the grass. Oh, look at that. I'm almost right there. Now that we have the benchmark established, so let's transfer our own lines. Oh, no pencil. She didn't give me a pencil with no, not sharpened. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see what kind of depth we have. What do you think, Shane? What do you think that's gonna be right there? Take a guess. Uh, How many inches? Let's see, it looks like maybe five inches. Yeah. Ooh, oh, you're, you're five and, and a half. half. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. It's a little bit deeper. No, deeper. We got about six, six and three four. eighths. Yeah. Pretty good. That means we're, we only need to go down like another three quarter inch. Yeah. Pretty solid. It was like meant to be here. Yeah, it's nice. Well, I tried grading it as best as I could oh. with the skister. Go down here now.
So this stake is exactly the same distance away from the foundation of the house, 5'8". So is that one. So you notice how the line got a lot lower. And that is because we're going up right now. We're getting further up on in the terrain, which means the, the laser or the benchmark we had over there dropped, which is good because that gives us room to play with. Let me measure the exact distance from that stake to this one. And let's see what we got. Looks like we have about 27 feet, which means we need So it would be ideal if we can go up, I would say, probably four inches. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> So four inches, we'll put us right here. Now the question is, are we get, is that gonna be too high or not? We're gonna find out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the benchmark now. I'm gonna go up four inches. Am I right on the line chain? Right there. Yeah, see you're like really close to it. Let's hold them close. Okay. I'll see what this is. Yeah, that looks good. Looks like that's gonna work. It actually could come up a little bit higher, it looks like, which is good. Pretty good. More slow. Shane, hold on. So it looks like we can get one more inch because that's where the existing concrete was. Let's see. How much more can we get? Yeah, looks like we need to do one more inch. So let's just let's do five inches. We'll get better fall. So we'll go to five inches. Okay, battery died. We just gotta replace. So let me show you guys really quick on how to do this calculations for when you're trying to figure out your rise over run and percentage of slope. So like I said, we had about 27 feet and we're growing up five inches. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert uh, this five feet divided by 12 to make it in inches, right? Then what we're gonna do is divide the rise over the run, which is 27. Right now we got this uh, percentage. All you gotta do is times that by 100, and then there is your sloping percentage. We got uh, one and a half percent slope out towards the front of the house, and that's perfect. That's a really good slope right there. So we're just gonna get these uh, string lines all established on these stakes, and then uh, start grading everything. So I hope that made sense of what I was doing with calculations on my calculator and going over the rise over run equations with you guys. I know some of you said you liked it. I know some of you said you skipped right through it on the last video I uploaded on the paver video that I did. But I thought I'd include it again in this one just because I know for people that are trying to learn the trades, that kind of stuff could really make the difference for them. But what you can see also what I'm doing right now is I am setting up string lines for this entire front yard, pretty much mapping out exactly where all of my forms are going to be going and then also where the pavers are going to be ending in the walkway. And these string lines are also mapping out my elevations for this whole entire front yard. So what we're going to be doing is um, Shane and uh, this other guy I picked up. Yeah, they're going to be basically digging out some irrigation lines and drain lines because like I said in the beginning of this video that drain that was popping up into the driveway I'm going to be moving that into the planter bed 
And then we're also going to need uh, some irrigation lines, new irrigation lines ran for those planter beds. And then you can see there's a little gap in front of the apron approach next to that 2x4. That gap is going to be filled with the 4x8 pavers, the soldier courses that we normally do for the outside edges that border the field. In this case, they're going to be bordering the diamond grid driveway we're going to be putting in. We're basically going to be having a soldier course go around the entire driveway, the planter beds, and the main paver areas. And so you can see I'm pretty much connecting a downspout to the main gutter line and I'm going to be routing it all the way to the front. So you can also see my string line going across the front of the garage entrance right there. And what I did when I set up my string lines was I put them about 8 inches away from the garage and foundation of the home because the pavers are about seven and three quarters and I want to make sure that I have enough room the whole way even if because sometimes you know the foundation and garage they're not perfect there's a little kick outs on the forms or whatever so I wanted to make sure that I have enough room after we pour the concrete to set the paver borders in and then if you look closely I'm doing the Pythagorean theorem right there on both sides really just to make sure that all my string lines and forms are completely straight and in line with the foundation of the home. Alright, here we are next week, Monday morning. We've got the driveway all formed out. We're going to be doing a little brick border, picture framing around all the concrete. So you can see I formed out a little 8 inch gap right here. Since we are going to be doing a soldier course, going all the way across like that. And of course going down, this is going to be like a little planter right here, pavers. You know, there's going to be a paper border going up along the bricks or along the concrete driveway. Like this. It's going to look really nice. And then up top of, of course, as well. Going down this way. We did add a, uh, a little drain to the downspout right here. Or the ring gutter. That's all attached and in place. And, uh,. Yeah, you can see we have a bunch of string lines running everywhere. So I wanted to make sure we got really, really straight and square off the foundation of the house. And I measured everything from the corner to the corner of the driveway and the bottom of the corner to the bottom. We all have the exact same measurement, so I know I'm very square with the foundation of the home. Checked all my corners with the squares. Everything's looking really nice and tight. Only thing we gotta do is run some irrigation lines right through this little planter bed area. Finish this uh, trench for the drain, going all the way to the curb. Pop up a little irrigation right here. And then we are gonna tee off right there, send an irrigation over to the other side because they're gonna be basically an identical planter bed right over there. So all we're doing right now is we are connecting some new sprinkler lines to the valves. We actually did install new valves for the homeowner. There's basically three valves we installed in total. One was for the sod area, one was for the front planter, and then one was for the two planters that we were going to be installing. So all we're going to be doing right now is we're just running our irrigation, finishing up our drain line. Once that's all done, we're just going to compact all of the soil and then we're going to bring in some road base. After we do have our road base in and compacted, we're going to install our rebar and after that we're going to be ready to pour out this job. So you can see we did compact all of our sub base. After that, we're going to be bringing our road base because like I said in the very beginning, I did dig extra out since I was going to be digging down extra for pavers I thought might as well just dig extra for the driveway to bring in some nice road base all right there it is just like that we have this driveway already graded it's a lot of the base though a lot more than I was thinking so we are gonna have to go do another 
base from. But Shane's getting that hose set up. We're gonna spray this down and then compact. Once it's done compacting and it feels nice and stiff, we'll throw our rebar in. Two foot on centers. It's hot today too. Been hot this whole week. It's about whew, it's been up to 100 degrees. We've had a heat wave down here in SoCal. It's been a little crazy. Oh shit, no way. Let's see it, dude. Let's see it. This is called a life hack. Oh, life hack right here, boys. Ice in the head. One little ice cube saves the day. Yes, sir. You do that all day? Ooh. All the time when it's hot. <laughs> it's been off this whole week. You gotta do something about it, yeah. It's been a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, excited to pour this driveway, though. We'll be pouring this out tomorrow. So, stay tuned for that. So that was a little nice trick Shane decided to share with us. If you're ever working out in 100 degree weather, throw a couple ice cubes in the hat, good to go. And now that we have all the basin, we're going to compact it. And we do go over the compaction multiple times and make sure to wet it really good too. After that, we're going to be putting in our rebar, two foot on center. Actually, I think I actually did about a foot on center with this one because I had extra rebar. So I didn't want the, the rebar to go to waste and you know it's always better to add more nothing wrong with that and then I also did put some rebar on the corners because I know those are crack points I didn't want it to crack there so I put through some uh, corner rebars in and I'm talking about the corners up the top Anyways, that basically wraps up part one, guys. Make sure to stay tuned for the next part. It's going to be the concrete pour. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We do really appreciate that. Thank you and have a great day, guys.